It was Emily's third day on the island. Same as yesterday, we took the outrigger canoe out in the morning to check out ghost ship sighting spots. But nothing turned up. Finding sunken ships was probably pretty hard even for the professionals. A few amateurs searching for a couple of days weren't likely to find anything. The girls had clearly lost all motivation. <sighs> that afternoon, we went back for lunch and to regroup. We sat by the Futamai Port Lighthouse and stared out to sea, eating ice cream. So this is what it's like when grown-ups search for treasure. If you don't keep believing in that treasure, you start to feel like an idiot. Come on, don't talk like that. I'm guessing the one who came all the way out here to hunt treasure is really down in the dumps, huh? <sighs> Emily sighed weakly and ate her cup of ice cream. She had been in a dark mood since dinner last night. What a fickle girl. And after all that high and mighty talk she did before. Chisa said as she bit into her lemon-lime popsicle. Well, we can't give up now. We've still got some time till tomorrow. But there will be a typhoon tonight. What? They said so on the weather this morning. Typhoon number 16 is gaining speed, so we gotta finish up early today. And yet it was still so sunny. At this rate, it'll hit the ferries hard tomorrow. I doubt they'll cancel any, but they might be late coming in. Nothing short of the rapture would stop the ferries from coming in. But if the seas got too rough, it would be hard to sail. And they probably wouldn't stay on schedule. In any case, it looked like Emily was going home tomorrow. I guess it's about time to grow up. Emily said sadly looking out over the empty foot of my port. The picturesque scene looked unchangeable, eternal. But that was more feeling than reality. And in reality, everything around, including ourselves, changed constantly. I mean, you can't swim at all, much less scuba. If we found it, how would you even bring the treasure to the surface? Jesus stated dryly. She had been in a bad mood since yesterday, too. Say, Emily, just what kind of treasure is on this ghost ship anyway? Mm. Emily didn't answer. From what I could find out, that boat sunk the same year we were born. We were all in our first year of high school, meaning it had sunk 16 years ago. Something very important. Emily answered curtly, and face her face set. Heh, <sighs> that's fine. Hey, you don't have to tell us. So what do we do next? We'd never accomplish anything just sitting here eating ice cream. <sighs> what do we do next? I don't even know where to look. It looked like they had both given up the hunt already. Well, would you mind joining us for a minute? I don't know where your treasure is, but I'd like to show you ours. Uh, you guys have a tre have treasure? You don't mind, do you, Chisa? Huh? Uh, oh, you can't mean... Chisa grabbed my arm. You can't be serious. You really want to take her? She came all the way to Ogasawar. It'd be a crime to send her home still hating the sea. At the very least, I'd like her to have one good memory to take back. Humph. Do what you want, then. You aren't coming? Mm. Uh, I'll go. I can't have you two alone in an isolated spot like that. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I could paddle all the way there. Our plan decided we hurried to leave. We scarfed down the last of our ice cream and then stood up. Um, I still have a degree to go. I ignored Emily, pretend to get in to hear her, as we headed out to sea once more.
What is this place? Oh. Oh, what a nice little uh, cove. That's the right word, right? A cove? And we stood on the tiny beach, her jaw hanging open. We used to play here all the time. It was like our secret base out in the ocean. This tiny island was originally a mountain that had appeared in the middle of the ocean, but it was worn down by erosion. This is Minama... Minam... Min... Amejama... A small uninhabited island southwest of Chichijima. It features a cave once used by the Japanese military. There's a small bay accessible to small boats through a fissure in the cliffs. We call it Minamaja. It's totally deserted. The only way in was by boat through a large gaping hole in the cliffs. On the other side was an inlet housing the beach we were all gathered on. It was no exaggeration to say the view was stunning. It was a tiny paradise. I've seen stuff like this in the movies. It's like a pirate's hideout. I totally get how you feel, but uh, could you help out a bit? She says I, and eventually Emily, pulled the outrigger canoe out of the water and onto the beach. The island is surrounded by lots of rock formations, so bigger cruise ships can't get too close. Something small like the, this canoe is fine, though. The Ogasawara Islands were formed by volcanic eruptions, which is why they look more like mountains sticking up out of the sea. Additionally, due to this type of formation, there were very few shallow beaches and lots of rocky cliffs. Quite different from the seas around the Okinawan Islands. Wow, it's just like I remember. It's beautiful, uh, but people hardly ever visit. The beach ran right up to the rocks, which only led to large rocky hills. There were hardly even any plants growing. As you climbed up higher, entrances to caves could be found too. It was the perfect spot for kids to play. Okay then, uh, let's go for a dip. Chisa stripped down to her swimsuit. Woohoo! Screw like a small kid, she took off running and dived into the water. Crap, she has all the fun. I should have worn my trunks. After she went under, it would be a while before she came back up. Those that didn't know better might start to worry. Anyway, this place is really nice. So I'm sure even you could relax here, Emily. I'm not really in the mood, though. We never found the ghost ship. Plus, I have to go back tomorrow. I don't think the ghost ship will ever appear, if you don't learn to like the ocean a bit. Just then, Chisa flew into the air from the center of the bay. Below her, a dolphin came leaping up too. Whoa! Too high! <laughs> Riding Finn, or rather being made to ride Finn, Chisa was flung into the air. Yeah! Splash, I guess. They both fell back into the water. Oh, oh my god! Emily was holding her chest, shocked at the sight of those two bursting out of the serene waters. Come on, Finn, that's too much! Eee? Trying to impress the cute girl? She's not some yokel tourist, you goofball. Eee? Finn dived deep, trying to lead Chisa down, and she couldn't resist, she dove in after. That dolphin, it's like he knows where Chisa is. He showed up yesterday, too. It's not like he knows, he does know. But how? By sound, apparently. Huh? You know, Chisa's uh, shell necklace? When she dives in, he can hear the sound it makes. Dolphins are very good hearer. No matter how far he is, if he hears that sound, he comes to play. 
And of course, Chisa keeps that necklace on to let Finn know where she is. I thought it was just a Tropical Island accessory. Ah, uh, I can't take it anymore. Huh? I jumped up, uh, and when... I jumped up, and when I started taking off my t-shirt, Emily hit her face behind her hands. W wait, uh, what are you... But I was just wearing regular underwear. Took off my shoes and socks, ran down to the beach, still in my pants, and jumped into the water. Ah, that feels so good. Oh, I thought I was going to faint. Emily seemed quite shocked. Emily, you should come in too. The water is nice and cool. It feels great. No way, I can't even swim. You're fine. The water is really shallow, so it should only come up to your knees. Uh, your clothes won't even get wet. Uh, oh, you finally made it, Turkey. Yeah. Splash. I really don't need to narrate the splash now, do I? Ah, all right. You asked for it. <laughs> While Chisa and I had our water fight, Finn swam around us happily. Emily sat alone on the beach and watched. But what the heck? Uh, leaving me here while they go and have fun? Mm. If it's really shallow, maybe I can. Water's so cool. It feels great. Emily took off her shoes and went in barefoot up to her knees, holding her skirt to keep it dry. She stared at her own legs in wonder. Hey, is everything okay? I'm fine. The water is just so clear. Of course it is. It's ocean water. No, actually, ocean water this clear is rare. You've just never been off the islands. Oh, that's rich, country boy. Why you... We started our water fight again. Emily, left alone once more, started to get bored. Yeah. <laughs> Splish. She raised her leg a little and kicked the water. She'd never reach us at this rate. Uh, take that! Oh, now a proper splash. And it was like a little kid touching water for the first time. Heavily smashing around, it was kinda cute. And as I was thinking on these pleasant thoughts. Graha! Ah! Jesus sent a huge wave over to Emily. As it hit her right in the face, she froze in shock. What are you? And another splash. Ah! <laughs> I think I just swallowed some. Uh, that wasn't me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. What's wrong with you, Harrow? Well, you're, you're all wet now. You might as well. I said as I waved her over. No way. Emily, stubborn as ever, folded her arms and looked away. She was a tough cookie. And another splash. Ah! Several buckets worth of water cascaded down on Emily, leaving her soaked to the bone. Um. As drops of water ran down her hair and over her face, Emily stared in shock. We all knew the culprits. <laughs> Finn seemed to smile merrily as he waved his tail fin, taunting her. Oh boy. I can't believe he... That's... That's it! E? You stop right there! Emily took off after the fleeing Finn. Naturally, Emily had no idea what would happen if she tried to run in water. Whoa, whoa, oh no! A sploosh now. She lost her footing in the water and did a perfect belly flop. The sea was shallow here, so there was no real danger, however. Emily, are, are you okay? I ran to help her when she didn't come up on her own. 
<laughs> and that's why I hate the ocean. No idea what you're talking about. She said, took off after Finn. Emily sat in knee deep water and glared at her enemy, the ocean. <sighs> Just uh, give up and swim. What? I mean, you're already sunk down to your underwear, right? My underwear? And we turned bright red and looked at her lower body. Then she looked nervously at the rocky cliffs guarding the entrance of the inlets. Will you hold my hand? She said with her eyes turned up, looking embarrassed. She must really have been scared of the water. I guess I wouldn't mind going for a swim if you held my hand. Oh, whoops. Uh. Hold it. I feel like holding someone's hand would make it more difficult to swim. I get used to the water first, I guess. Yeah. Uh. Just until you're used to the water. What's the matter? I mean, it's fine, I guess. Just seems like a cold way to put it. When I was too nice, then we chased the wood start to sulk, so I ended up sounding a little harsh. Okay, hold your head until you're ready to let go. Fine then, I guess I'll let you hold my head. Okay, well, let's go. I took Eversley's hand and led her out into the deeper water. She became hesitant as the water began to rise above her clothes. And in that sailor uniform, it was quite a rare sight to behold. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't touch the bottom. If you just hold still, you'd float. Uh, grab onto me. Right. And he placed a hand on my shoulder. She didn't have to worry about sinking, but she didn't have good control of her body either, so she held onto me tightly. Uh, sorry. Ah, I should be thanking you. I'm getting hugged by a cute girl, after all. <laughs> Perfect facial expression. Hero, you sound like some kind of playboy. Huh? Why? I just feel like since you said stuff like that before, you just seem used to it. If I was, wouldn't I have at least one girlfriend by now? You don't? Unfortunately, no. Hmm. But, uh, what about Chisa? Chisa? Uh, she's just an old friend. Besides, we haven't even seen each other for nearly four years now. And she said something about a boyfriend. I only vaguely recalled that conversation. Emily eyed me sp suspiciously. Well, you don't say flirty stuff like that to her. Well, that's because I'm not some crazy skirt chaser. I was really only trying to be nice. Oh, it drops off here, so uh, be careful. Just beyond the inlet's entrance, the sea floor dropped away like a cliff and got much deeper. Ah, no, no! Relax, there's nothing to be afraid of. But, but, my legs, I'm gonna drown! Why don't you take a look below the surface? You'll see the ocean is nothing to be afraid of. But it is! There are sharks and evil dolphins! Dolphins like that are pretty rare. To show her how, I took a deep breath and went under. I looked up and waved at Emily from under the water. <sighs> Emily gave up and followed suit. Try opening your eyes. She couldn't hear me, but I tapped her shoulder and she got the message. Emily slowly opened her eyes. The first thing she saw was probably air bubbles. The air we breathed out was climbing back to the surface. Then came the sunlight piercing the clear water. A view of the sea floor was spread out beyond the oscillating curtain of light. Mm -hmm. 
There were coral reefs. And schools of fish. It was beautiful, a scene scattered with organisms colored like gems. And we gazed ahead in wonder. I watched her from the side. Her face suddenly turned a shade of blue. I quickly tapped her on the shoulder, then pointed upward. <sighs> I almost died. Of course you did. Remember to breathe. Right. Uh, got it. Breathe. Breathe. So, how was it? Looks like you were so caught up you forgot to breathe. Hmm. It seemed like she was too stubborn to admit the truth. Her face reddened and her lips grew tight as she spoke. Well, I mean, I guess you could call that pretty, at the very least. She seemed to be looking for a word that went beyond just pretty. As Emily laid a hand on my shoulder, she appeared reluctant to say more as she stared at the spark sparkling surface. It wasn't dark at all down there. Like sparkled everywhere like looking through a crystal. Instead of finding a treasure chest, she began to see the ocean as a treasure in and of itself. Can we do it again? As many times as you want. And we took another deep breath, ready to go back under, when suddenly something huge floated into view. Another splash. Ah! It was Chisa riding Finn. Don't sneak up on me like that. I was holding my breath and my lungs could have exploded. And what have you two lovebirds been up to this whole time? Yee. Uh... Huh. I was just lending a hand, you know. She can't swim. As sweet as ever. I wish you'd lend me a hand sometimes. But you can swim. I'd like to meet a swimmer good enough to lend you a hand. That would probably only be Finn, an actual dolphin at this point. Come on, Emily. I'll show you around the island. Uh, no way. You, you know I can't swim. It's fine. Finn will carry you, right, buddy? Eee. -e. Uh, like I trust him. I let go of my shoulder and began dog paddling furiously toward the beach. But she sank almost immediately. Yeah. And faster than I could reach her. <sighs> Finn held her up on the surface. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's the second time you saved me. Maybe you really are a nice dolphin. Finn is a friend to anyone who loves the sea. I wondered if Finn was starting to warm up to Emily now that she had warmed up to the sea. But as he wasn't uh, your conventional dolphin, it was best not to let your guard down. Hee hee! Whoa, whoa, whoa. wait, uh, where are we going? Finn began swimming out of the inlet, with Emily still on top, clutching his dorsal fin. Uh, Chisa? It's fine. He knows what he's doing. Chisa said before taking off after them. I was nowhere near Chisa's level when it came to swimming, so I decided to wait in the inlets. About five minutes later, the two girls and one dolphin came back to the beach. <sighs> that was terrifying. You liar. You were safe on Finn the whole time. How far did you go? Uh, just one time around, uh, Minimijam. We took it slow. Finn had been quite careful with Emily and kept his speed under tight control. But since it was Emily's first time on a dolphin, it probably still felt incredibly fast. It, it was terrifying. But fun. <laughs> she had been trembling, but suddenly her eyes sparkled as she pumped her fist in the air. Oh, Haruki, it was so beautiful. Oh, and on the other side of the island, there were all these fish and... 
Emily told me all about the things she'd seen. Hmm. All this fish talk is making me hungry. I think we'll have, uh, sashimi for dinner tonight. So don't eat them! You're terrible. How could you want to eat all those cute little fish? Exactly! Like you two weren't eating those cute little fish last night. Uh, that was different. Exactly! This was getting absurd. Well, at least you're done hating the sea. In no way, in, not at all. The ocean's terrifying. It sounded like she had enjoyed herself, though. Maybe it was like riding a roller coaster for her? The sea around Agasmar is totally different from the one I know. It doesn't smell bad, and it's so clear. That is true. Yep, that's how it is here. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go have some fun. Yeah. We ran around the shallows like little kids, splashing, jumping, floating on the surface like jellyfish. I was in my pants and Emily in her uniform, but we didn't care at all. After about an hour, we were all totally exhausted. Let's go rest in the shade. Agreed. Uh, but uh, I want to keep playing. Some folks get carried away playing in the sun and have to go to the hospital for the sunburn the next day. The sunburn? It's an actual burn, you know. In bad cases, they blister. You do know what a sunburn is, right? I mean, come on. I, it's a sunburn. Ah! Uh. Ah! Emily took off running out of the water and threw herself into the shade of the rocks. She said I strolled over to lay down in the shade. Yee-yee! See you later! We cooled down under the shade of the rocks. And eventually, we all closed our eyes. Oh. Typhoon's coming, isn't it?